So here we see that chart of how stocks, bonds, and real estate have done when the Fed raised interest rates. And you can see it's almost unanimously good. Positive returns throughout the one or even three year periods while the Fed was increasing rates. I'll walk you through this data, but what this doesn't show, and this is what could eventually kill the stock market and what investors have all wrong right now is what comes after this. It's a critical piece of this that nobody is watching. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the one thing that could kill this stock market. And despite what you're hearing all across the media and financial news, it is not increasing interest rates. In fact, I'm going to show you the proof that stocks usually post positive returns while the Fed is hiking rates. In this video, I'll show you the returns on different investments while the Fed is increasing interest rates and why you should not be scared. I'll show you which stocks to buy while rates are going up and then reveal the critical piece that investors are missing that could derail this stock market and how to invest. We're getting started, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I want to thank StockCard for helping me get some of the data for this video. I'll leave a link to StockCard in the video description below. Click through and then go to Portfolios in the top menu. You'll find the Bowtie Nation portfolio in the stock picks section. It's free to follow and you'll get email notifications whenever I buy or sell from the list. Don't forget to use the promo code Bowtie Nation. That's all one word in lowercase for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Nation, everywhere you look, people are trying to blame higher interest rates for falling stocks. That the 20% plunge in the tech heavy NASDAQ and the 10% drop in the S&P 500 since November was all due to the Fed starting its cycle of increasing interest rates last month. But the fact is, and this is something we've been talking about on the channel, is that sell-off was so much more a function of investor behavior, the tendency to overreact on expected news ahead of time. It was also why if you were following the channel, you would have been ready for that rebound in stocks in mid-March when the Fed actually did start raising rates. Because higher rates are not the problem. I want to show you data here on it with a great graphic from Visual Capitalist on how different investments did when the Fed was increasing interest rates in the past. Looking through this is going to show you why investors should not be scared of rising rates. But then, I'm going to show you what's missing, the piece that everyone is forgetting that could cause stocks to fall once again. So here we see that chart of how stocks, bonds, and real estate have done when the Fed raised interest rates. And you can see it's almost unanimously good. Positive returns throughout the one or even three year periods while the Fed was increasing rates. I'll walk you through this data, but what this doesn't show, and this is what could eventually kill the stock market and what investors have all wrong right now, is what comes after this. It's a critical piece of this that nobody is watching. Now, the graphic is interesting, but a little busy, so I want to look at the table here instead. This shows the same thing, what each of these investments did while the Fed was increasing rates in the past. So you've got three time periods here, starting in 1999 for about a year, uh, for about two years starting in 2004, and then again for three years starting December of 2015. The Fed increased interest rates during each of these periods. And the first thing you see is that the returns on almost every investment and asset class were positive. You had high yield bonds, real estate, and those value stocks showing some weakness there in the 1999 period, but, but only a loss of about 2%. Other than that, positive returns even for bonds, which are supposed to fall when the interest rates increase. So the first lesson here is just not to freak out like everyone is saying right now as the Fed starts increasing interest rates. The central bank raised rates for more than three years starting in 2015, and gross stocks still returned 12% a year. Hardly the stock market crash some are predicting right now. And we will dig deeper into that data next, but to understand this, you only need to understand why the Fed increases interest rates and when. If the Fed or the nation's central bank is tasked with doing just two things, keep unemployment low and make sure the prices or inflation don't rise too quickly. But the problem is these are kind of competing phenomena, right? If the economy is growing, people are getting those wage increases and, and spending money, then unemployment is gonna be low. But, but if the economy grows too fast, inflation is gonna start heating up. So the Fed uses its power over interest rates to raise or lower rates, either slowing down or boosting the economy to keep those two parts of the economy in balance. You know, that low unemployment, but also slow inflation. So if you think about it, it does not make sense to be scared of stocks when the Fed is raising interest rates. 
And that's because the Fed is usually going to be increasing rates when the economy is strong and when unemployment is already low, like it is right now. So it doesn't have to worry about that. But when inflation is heating up a little bit. So what you have is a growing economy, low unemployment and healthy consumer spending because of that good jobs picture. That is all a great environment for stocks and, and why the stock market is usually very strong while the Fed is hiking. Now, there are a couple of other facts I want to point out in this table, including how to invest before we get to that real danger. What could actually cause the next stock market crash? Next is you do not have to be scared of bonds either. Everyone wants you to believe that bonds are dead and, and cannot provide the safety they used to when rates increase. But, but all four bond categories here at the top posted strong returns when rates increased. It was only those high yield bonds that fell in 2000. And that was because the stock market started to crack towards the end of that rate cycle. And this is going to be very important for what comes next for what could bring that eventual market crash that that you have some safety in bonds. And shares of the Vanguard long term bond ETF ticker BLV have fallen 24% in less than a year an unprecedented drop the fastest in the funds history. In fact, the ETF now pays a 2.9% dividend yield and is going to provide you that protection you need when the stock market does turn. Now, stocks also did well, especially those large cap growth stocks, the third line up here from the bottom, posting an average 13.6% annual return. And commodities like copper and oil produce the highest average return here for 26% annually over each of these three periods. And we've seen those shares of the Invesco DB Commodity Fund, ticker DBC, take off recently on the Ukraine invasion, but, but the fund was up 38% in the last year, even before that. And again, it's a no brainer here that commodities would do well when the Fed is raising rates because, again, that very reason the central bank is hiking rates is because of faster inflation. Since commodities are real assets, they're going to do well with those higher prices. I think the real opportunity, though, is in those growth stocks and especially the tech stocks in the Nasdaq, which have sold off 13% and more since late last year, as everyone just abandons growth ahead of the higher rates. The Invesco QQQ trust is down 12% since mid November, but we've seen how well growth stocks can actually do during rate hike cycles. And what we do not see in this data and what nobody is talking about right now is what comes after what comes after the Fed stops raising interest rates. Now, that's the kind of forward looking analysis that is going to protect you from when stocks do decide to crash. For that, I reached out to stock card for the returns on these same investments during the one year period after the Fed stopped increasing interest rates. And there are two things you need to see here. One is that for the most part, investments still produced a positive return even after interest rates stopped increasing. But also that it was never very long before the next stock market crash began. We'll look closer at that and what stocks to buy. But again, this makes sense if you think about why the Fed stops raising interest rates. Remember back to those two factors that cause it to increase or decrease rates, inflation and unemployment. So if the Fed is raising interest rates to slow the economy and cool off that inflation, but then it stops, what does that say about the economy? When the Fed stops raising interest rates, that tells me that economic growth has come down enough that inflation isn't a problem anymore or, or worse, that the Fed might now be worried that higher rates are starting to slow the economy so much that, that it could lead to higher unemployment. Nation, that is when you need to start worrying about the stock market, when the Fed sees cracks appearing in the economy and stops raising interest rates. The stock market crash happened almost immediately as the Fed stopped its rate hikes in 2000 and was very close on its heels in 2006. The one year returns show positive for stocks through July 2007, but, but it was soon after in October actually that they peaked and started the crash into 2008. Stocks did well again after the 2019 interest rate hikes. And it's hard to say here how they would have done in 2020 if the pandemic hadn't hit. But, but I think the message is clear. Stocks can do well while the Fed is increasing rates and can keep doing pretty well a little afterwards. But, but eventually, those higher interest rates do what they're supposed to do. They slow down the economy to slow inflation. That's what the Fed is trying to do in the first place. And it's always that that tricky balancing act to do it without slowing the economy so much that that it leads to a recession and a stock market crash. So how to invest in all of this? How should you invest in a stock market that is worried about the wrong thing? First, just understand that stocks can do well as interest rates increase. Look to those growth stocks that have sold off so much already. When the Fed starts talking about slowing or even stopping its rate increases, 
that is when you want to start being more cautious. Uh, that's when you start looking for more safety in bonds and then pulling back on your stocks before interest rates do start to shake the stock market. Click on the video to the right for the seven stocks I'm buying right now. My highest conviction stocks in which I'm investing over $250,000 in my own portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.